What's going on? My name is Seth and uh, I am a filmmaker, video guy, cinematographer. I don't know. I don't really care what you call me, uh, but I've been in this industry for roughly 10 years and uh, I've learned a lot of things and I want to learn more things. And today I really wanted to help people by showing them how to bypass contrast from the DaVinci film emulations and also how to get a really, really pleasing image every single time. I started this out in S-Log3. Uh, you can use these same film emulation uh, node trees that I have right here on anything at all under the sun. Uh, you just have to know the proper gamma and the proper color space that it was shot in, and this would work basically exactly the same. If you wanna leave a like or a thumbs up or whatever they call it on this platform, I don't even know, uh, but if you want to leave one of those um, down below, that'd be super awesome and helps me to understand that I am actually helping people on this platform, uh, YouTube, this YouTube world. If you also want to subscribe, that'd be awesome too, because then you'll know when the next time I make one of these videos and I try and be really, really helpful in these videos. Anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and go on into it. All right. So first thing is first, I created these film look emulation power grades. If you're too lazy to build this yourself after I'm going to show you right now how to build this, uh, you could download what I'm making right now. It's, uh, it's going to be in the description below. Um, I highly recommend that you figure out how to build this yourself. Um, but basically, uh, I created these for S log three, uh, S game at three. Um, and they will work for pretty much anything as long as you know the proper gamma and color space that you shot or that your footage was shot in. So hopefully uh, this helps you, but I'm gonna show you right now how to make this yourself. Um, but basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be bypassing the contrast curves that are built in with Resolve on their film look emulations because we don't really like the con, well, I don't really like the contrast that's built into those. Uh, I want to be able to make the contrast where I want to make the contrast. Uh, we are using the colors from the film print, which is basically the main thing that everybody wants to use from these. So we're going to do a contrast bypass and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm also going to show you how to do a HSL saturation, which is something that I've learned from quite a few different YouTubers. Just a simple color grade and color correction um, on these clips. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into it. All right, so first thing is first, I'm going to show you uh, here what I built, um, what is going to be free in the download uh, link in the description. Um, so it's going to be this guy right here. Uh, so when you apply this to your node tree, it's going to basically convert from S-Log3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then uh, here it's going to go from DaVinci Wide Gamut to S-Log or to Rec. 709 Gamut 2.4. Um, and then right here is going to be all of the film print emulation uh, looks um, with contrast bypass. Uh, so it's not going to change your contrast, just the color specifically. Um, I will be showing you how to do this. Um, you can, I'm going to show you how to build this, my, like how I built this. Uh, you can build it yourself with the way that you want to build it. Uh, but if you want to just skip all of that and just download this, it's totally easy. Uh, if you want to install something like this, it would also be very easy. If you guys want to go to your power grades, I just made another window right here because I don't want you to see all this stuff. But easily, you can just right click in here um, in the power grade window, click import, Seth, film print, node structure. There it is. I mean, very easy. Um, we're going to go ahead and click import. And there it is. Uh, so now you can just apply it if you are shooting this on canon or whatever just change this color space your input color space and your input gamma the rest of everything else should work just fine for you um this would be the only thing that you would have to change you shouldn't change this you shouldn't change any of these uh they should all be good to go for you we're gonna go ahead and build this now with your node structure it's very very important that you actually go to this gear Go to the color management. Uh, so I am going to be making this film print um, node structure for DaVinci YRGB. DaVinci Intermediate is your color space, your timeline color space, and your output color space is going to be Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Um, that is like a broadcast standard uh, that is extremely well accepted. So I highly recommend this. This is also a larger color space that you can work in and a larger gamma that you can work in. Um, and it's made by DaVinci, so obviously DaVinci's things are going to work the best with it. Uh, under 3D lookup table interpolation, we're going to go ahead and use tetrahedral because it will uh, it'll use the lot a lot better. Um, from there, your master settings, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we're going to do in here. Um, and then another really quick thing 
If you're on a Mac, I highly recommend that you go to your DaVinci Resolve preferences. You go to preferences, then general, and then use Mac color display profiles for viewers. Otherwise, you're gonna have a weird gamma shift in this whole thing, so I highly rec recommend this. Um, if you do this, you only have to do it one time. You'll never have to do it again um, unless you're reinstalling the program, but yeah, that's gonna make a huge difference. Uh, if you are doing this for the first time, you're gonna have to restart your program, but whatever. Without further ado, let's go ahead and start building this thing. So, uh, first thing is my, I always like to build a no tree and start with the noise reduction. I like to have a place for it. If I use it or not, I can always use it later. The next thing is going to be CSC, DWG. Um, if you don't know what that means, uh, I recommend checking out one of my other videos because um, I kind of explained this a little bit, but we're going to take this color space transform, slap it on there. I shot this in um, S Gamut 3. I didn't use S Gamut Cine. Uh, most, most of the time, Sony cameras will make you use S Cine. Uh, I choose not to because it's a little bit smaller of a color space than S Gamut 3. Um, so S-Log3, now we're going to go DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. Once we're there, we can start building our actual node structure. So this is our bottom bun if you have watched those videos that I have already created. Uh, so from there, we are going to make a balance node. So this first one is balance. This is going to be like your white balance or whatever. Um, I like to use this in a parallel so that way we're not degrading our node structure any further than we need to. Um, this next one is going to be exposure. Uh, and then after those two, this is going to be your color, your color correction is going to all land right in here. So this is where you're going to do your uh, exposure. This is where you're going to do your balance. So your white balance and whatnot. Um, from there, we are going to start with color grading. So this is gonna be like a color, let's just do C warp. Right here, we're gonna add a parallel. I don't know why that didn't connect. This one is gonna be for skin, type skinny because that's what I wanna be. And another node from here, we're going to add another parallel. I'm still not sure why this isn't connecting, but it is not. Uh, so we're gonna connect that ourselves. Uh, this one is going to be a look adjust. So that is going to be the end of the color grade within DaVinci Wide Gamut. So from here, uh, we are going to do the shaping. So if you don't know what shaping is, um, it's basically like using power windows to shape different lights and stuff like that. So uh, we'll just do this and we'll add another and shape to... Uh, we'll give you a third one. Cool. So now that these are properly created, uh, from here, we are going to add another node, and this is going to be our CST 709. So now we're going to do the opposite thing than we did here. So we went input, um, S gamut three, S log three to DaVinci wide gamut in DaVinci Intermediate. So this one, we're going to do DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. We're going to do Rec 709, and then we're going to do Gamma 2.4. Um, so this is going to give me a proper conversion of our footage into Rec 709. This is called a Node Structured Color Management System. I really like Node Structured co Color Management, but it's not for everybody. Um, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to make another node uh, and this is going to be the start of my saturations and such. So um, I hate the color green on camera. I think that green on camera usually looks really bad. Um, it's a preference thing. I've seen greens done really well. I've seen greens done really bad. Um, green is a really hard color for a camera. So we're gonna go ahead and make greens. Uh, the next one is going to be blues. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I love the rendition of the color blue um, on camera. It looks amazing, and it's also the opposite of skin tone, so that's something that we're going to do. Uh, another one that we're going to use is going to be a glow, which is an effect. Um, and then we're going to make another parallel node. This one is going to be overall set. 
Okay. So now that these are made, and if you wanted to add like a grain or something, I would highly recommend adding it here. Um, so you can do like grain. Um, you could do another one for halation. You know, but whatever you want to add to that, that's where you would add those. Um, so the cool thing about this is uh, this node is getting a clean signal from the 709 to the halation. Same with grain. So the grain is not affecting the halation. The grain is also not affecting the greens and the blues. The, they're, the way that they all work is this node is feeding a clean signal to each one of these nodes. Then this node right here, um, this this parallel mixer here, what it does is it takes all of those nodes and, and mixes them all into one. Um, so that's basically degrading your signal the least amount when you do it this way. Now that we've done this, this is where the magic is going to start happening. So this is where we are going to create our contrast bypass for um, our film emulations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make two nodes. On the second node, I am going to make a layer. Um, what this is is a layer mixer. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to change the composition of this specific node. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a serial after this. And um, now what I'm going to do is I am going to throw a color space transform right here. I'm going to make it rec 709, gamma 2.4. I'm going to go rec 709 for the output color space. And then here is where it gets interesting. I'm going to go to Cineon film log. Um, so now this is allowing me to convert this to Cineon film log, uh, making the colors correct for the way that the LUT is going to work with the colors. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to throw on Kodak 2383D60 or D65. Let's just do D65 um, because it works. So we're going to add that. So now that I've done these, I can actually right click on this. This is, this is where the magic happens. So this obviously introduces quite a bit of contrast. I can, I can see that like the skin is like just really, really spreading on the scopes. Everything is spreading super, super far on the scopes. And in order to uh, mute that and allow it to where only the colors are affected, I can go to this layer mixer, right click it, go to composite mode, and just do color. Now, all this is doing is just affecting the color, not affecting the luminance values, just saturations and hues, which is awesome. Now, the cool thing that you can do with this is you can create a compound node here. And with this compound node, we're going to call this uh, Kodak 2383D65. Now here, the cool thing is if you don't want to use the full LUT, you can go to your key output and you can do 0.8. You can change, I mean, say you want it to barely be there, 0.3. You can change all that. Whereas beforehand, if you would have done it the normal way, um, which is the normal way would be to, instead of doing a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 conversion here, the normal way would be to change this to Cineon Film Log and then make a lot after that and throw your, I mean, I, you can't you can't lessen the power of this lot. If you lessen the power of the lot, you're lessening your contrast levels, and it just all becomes very wonky, very very quick. So with the way that I'm showing you right here, uh, you have full control over the amount of color that you want from the lot. You have the full amount of contrast that you built in the version that I made. Um, I have each and every one of these uh, film print emulations. Uh, they are already stacked, so you can basically go in here, let's kill this, and we'll change this one to, uh, let's just say 3513D55. So now we can go in here, show compound node, take this and change it to 3513D55 and get a nice look from that. So the difference it's clearly different. It's a different LUT, it's a different look. Um, and the cool thing is once you build this out and you save it as a power grade, you can always come back and reinstall it. Once you import the color space and everything like that and you have your 
uh, timeline looking looking nice. You're gonna take this exposure, uh, and since we're in a color space aware thing, I can bring up the brightness on everything. And if you can see, not really much is clipping other than the light um, because we are working in a large color space. So I can actually darken the whole image, take the light portions, which should be my face and the wall and stuff like that. Um, we could bring that up, take the shadows down a smidgen. Make it nice, I'm nice and contrasty. So if you can see my skin tone's looking good, walls looking good, whatever. Uh, balance, we can use the global to, you know, really, really adjust what this is doing. Boom, there we go. So still looking, still looking great on the skin tones. Walls looking good. This is looking a lot more blue. It's adding a lot more value to our image. Um, even if we went to a D, a D55, uh, it's looking great. The color warp is also really nice because it's color space aware. So you can actually go in to color warp here. And I personally like this to be 12. Um, I usually turn my auto lock on and I do three points. Um, so that way I don't grab something and go a little too far. But here you can change your saturation values of a specific range of colors and it'll take one outside, one inside and kind of stretch those. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's really nice. I, I really like this, this tool. Um, you can, you can easily like go through and change skin tones and you can change up, um, luminance values and saturation values, um, change your hues. So like there I'm on the skin tone line, uh, and it looks like the rest of my image is a little bit to the left, which is um, yellow and magenta. And we're gonna bring the whole image a little to the blue. There we go. So that's just taking those white points and kind of moving them closer to the white. Uh, last thing that I do on every single grade, uh, for the most part, if it calls for it, um, is I call this one the finisher because it's always my last node. Um, and then I'm going to go to saturation versus luminance. I'll take a point like here. And a point like here, I'm gonna bring the highlight down and I'm gonna bring the shadow down. So basically what this is gonna do is that's gonna clean up. If you look in here, it's going to make that a lot more uniform in the black. So it's gonna clean my black up and make it look more black. It's really difficult to tell here on YouTube, uh, but we'll look specifically at this chair. So you can see there's a blue hue here. Um, we're getting rid of that. So it's it's getting this a lot closer to what it should be. It's getting that a lot closer to what that should be. Now that I've showed you those cool secret moves, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple more secret moves that I really like. Um, one being glow. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to select just the darkest parts of the image. So shirt, dark parts on the computer and stuff. We're going to take this high soft. We're gonna kind of feather it in. There we go. We're gonna up our clean white, up our clean black, tiny bit of denoise, cool. Now we're going to go to our glow and we're going to slap that on there. Uh, this is a this is a look that you also, you need to click this. It'll affect the full level instead of just your selected items. So we need, we need that on because otherwise this step is just null and void. Uh, next thing we're gonna do the composite type to soft light and that's basically just going to take those blacks and make them darker. Um, it's going to just take that bottom part and kind of push it, but not push it too far. Um, the next little thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this node, the, over or the overall saturation node, do color space, uh, bring it to HSL. Um, a lot of YouTubers have been doing this and it looks really good. So I uh, figured I would show you if you haven't seen it already. Uh, so you're gonna change the color space to HSL. You're gonna take your channels, take one off and take three off. That's going to be hue and luminance. Now uh, your saturation will look weird if you use this knob. Um, so we're not gonna use that. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use this gain right here. So this gain is going to do an overall saturation of your image. Um, it looks a lot more pleasing. Uh, it gives gives this whole image a very nice warm look because we're using a D55. 
but if we use the D65, it'll give it a lot more coolness in it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think that looks really nice. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with these right here. So we're going to make this blues specific. Um, this doesn't work for every single shot because sometimes you don't have that proper color in there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the highlight node and we're going to select just blues, just the blue values and throw that softness in there, blues and teals. Uh, and we're going to do clean black to kind of clean up that selection. Cool. So now that those are selected, I can raise and lower the contrast of just the blues. Uh, and the place that you're going to see it the most is going to be like here and there and a little bit on the circus revive poster up here um, Not a ton on that poster, but you will see it on that poster just a smidgen um, So Cool, so now we can grab this and we can change the saturations so you can see it's like screaming the saturation on this guy right here um, I have this in show two times. We are within the legal limit, which is great, uh, but we don't want to put that much saturation because that looks a little crazy. And then with the greens, we're going to do the same thing. So, uh, color space, if you want me to show you again, color space, uh, HSL, kill hue, kill luminance, um, and then we are going to go to just our greens. So... Yeah, there we go. And then soften that out. Clean black to kind of clean it up a little bit. Denoise. Cool. Now, uh, I'm going to do the opposite of what I did with the blues, and I'm going to kind of bring it back. So that's just taking that color and making it a little less annoying um, to me. Thank you so much for watching this video this far. Uh, there's a link in the description here, and it will basically make it to where you can download uh, this specific Thing that I built right in front of you. So if you're too lazy to make it yourself, you can just download it. That's fine. Um, it has everything set up the way that I already set it up. So you can use it. You can mess with it. You can change it. You can do whatever you want to it. Uh, I'm not saying anything in this is proper or correct. Uh, the only thing that I feel as if is correct is that you're going to color grade after you color correct and then you're going to throw your shades and stuff like that and effects and then the LUT and everything else. So if you guys want, you can download that. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Go ahead and leave a comment. I answer every comment. Um, that's the great thing about nobody knowing who you are. Uh, <laughs> I, that's the great thing about not being famous. The awesome thing about me being a very small channel is if you comment on this video, I will see your comment. So you can send me hate or you can ask me questions. Either way, I'll probably get back to you. Uh, most likely, if it's a question, I will get back to you. Um, but anyways, uh, hope this helped you out. Go ahead and leave a comment, maybe a like, maybe a subscribe, just in case I make any more videos. You can see them. Catch you in the next one. Uh, do I... Do I need any blue? I feel like every YouTuber has a lot of blue in the background. Uh, I don't look relaxed at all. Okay, you guys. Okay, wait. What's going on? My name is Seth. The point? That was...